Welcome back to The Exchange. The S&P 500 is nearly on the cusp of taking out its record high from two years ago. But my next guest says it's time to start buying the beaten down parts of the market. Let's dive in further with David Bonson. He's CIO of the Bonson Group. David, so far the market's in your mood the last couple of days, don't you think? Don't you think? Welcome. Yes. Uh, Happy New Year, Kelly. It does seem as if the start of 2024 feels more like 2022 than 23. Of course, it's only a couple of days, but uh, obviously those big momentum names in the NASDAQ are facing a valuation wall. They're just extremely expensive, and many names can execute really, really well from here and yet already have it priced in where I do think some of the defensives in 2023 that were still up in many cases, some of the utility names may not have been, but they weren't up that much. They didn't get overstretched. I think 24 is going to produce some of those opportunities. So in t- before we kind of dive into those opportunities, does that mean the Magnificent Seven that they're not part of your portfolio? Because even though I take everybody's point about the size of the companies and the performance this year, on a two-year basis, it's not that spectacular. And on a PE basis, some of them are, you know, 30x. It's not, you know, crazy. Oh, uh, 30x would be the cheap ones. I mean, some of them are 100x and and 50x. I mean, as a group, they're 55x evenly weighted among the seven. Isn't that Amazon, though, largely Amazon? Because even NVIDIA is at, what, 30, Microsoft 30, Apple probably I don't know, 20-something? Yeah, I mean, again, some of it is if you're looking forward versus trailing. That makes a huge difference, too. Um, I think the idea with some of them is absurd that they can hold their margins and get some of the revenue growth that's projected. And so you have a lot of issues with that. But you're, you make a great point about the two-year view. You had such an incredible performance in 2023 for some of them. Let's take NVIDIA out. A lot of the rest of them are a negative return or even returns. You recall like a group like Netflix, which isn't the Magnificent Seven, but the old FANG nomenclature. Mm-hmm. It gave back... 10 years of returns in 2022 in like six months. I mean, these things are capable of falling very quickly. So, and perhaps you're kind of hinting we could see that happen again. I mean, certainly the places you're looking, do you expect big gains out of them or are they just ways to stay defensive? No, I mean, what it is for us is a permanent philosophy of investing, Kelly. I believed it in 22 as well. Dividend growth was up about 6 or 7% when the S&P was down 20. Dividend growth was not up as much as the market in 2023, but it still had a mid-teens performance, which most people would take any year. And on a two-year basis is beating the S&P by over 10%. And so you made a really good point before the break. We're not back to our high with the S&P. As great as 2023 was, based on 22, investors still haven't got back to that level they were two years ago. That's the market I think we're gonna be in for years. Big years up, a few years down, but range bound. And the problem, the reason I believe that is because of valuations. You just simply cannot get the earnings growth to get double digit returns compounded for the next 10 years Mm -hmm. with a market starting at 20 times earnings. But see, now you're making us nervous again because because for the new year you know we have to fund some 529s and things like that and and the back of our mind we're like please let this not be the year that the market tops out for the next five or ten but then you know you, you feel like that might always be the case and one of the frustrations I have is that the, you want to make that consideration on a rational basis, not with the Fed hanging over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. And there's been this wall of when the Fed would stop tightening. Investors dealt with that all of 23, and they felt like they got that pal pivot at the November meeting. And I most certainly agree with consensus that you're going to see rate cuts in 23. And I don't really care if it's 100 basis points or 200 basis points. Mm-hmm. It's going to likely be somewhere in between there. But fundamentally, you just have earned earnings projections that are really optimistic, and you're doing that at a starting point of a high valuation. I'm a child of the late 90s, early 2000s, beginning my professional investing career. I saw incredible companies that have performed magnificently for 25 years that never got back to those levels that they were. Cisco, Intel, some of those great examples, right. because if people entered in too high a valuation, you just couldn't recover. You know, this is not help. What am I going to do? Buy bond? They they give you four options in these investment accounts. Like you can do the S and P. You can do some, you know, bond fund. There's not a lot out there. I can't go buy American Electric Power, Clorox, and Gilead like you're recommending. 
Well, of course, uh, individual portfolios like the ones we manage, this is the part where I get to talk my book. That's where you can do it. You're right. In some of these target date funds and 401ks or packaged 529s, they don't have that option. A lot of 529s do offer some form of an active, maybe a value yeah, fund. But I that mean, makes that's me one nervous. way to mitigate the risk is at least be value biased versus growth. I, I know, but the, you know, the fee structure and the, the perform. I don't know who the fund manager is. And then I got to go look at it. It just feels, you know, it's nerve wracking. But but, but to your point, so when you put these portfolios together, you're not doing sector selection. This is all stock by stock. Yeah, we're individual stock buyers, and it ends up with the sector allocation. I mean, you mentioned American Electric Power is one of the names I presented today. It's a utility name that we think is best to breed. Big dividend, big dividend growth. It's the only utility name we own, though. I'm not trying to go get the utility sector. I'm trying to get American Electric Power, which I think fell last year because utilities were down 7%, but it's a name that belongs higher. It's underpriced and a great dividend growth. All right, David, we'll leave it there. Thanks for for the wisdom, although now you're making me nervous again, like I said, but I appreciate it very much today. It's good to see you. Thanks, Kevin. David Bonson of the Bonson Group.